Stem cells. Two words loaded with political, ethical, and scientific implications. The very idea of such research triggers anger in some while raising hope for others. Beyond the headlines and the hype, the fundamental question remains. Is stem cell research ready for prime time clinical medicine? We're here at the Stem Cell Institute of New Jersey to find out. With federal support of Human Embryonic Stem Cell Research Limited, states have had to pick up the slack. Eight states, including New Jersey, have already issued grants or funded the construction of facilities to move this research forward. While awaiting completion of its new home in downtown New Brunswick, the Stem Cell Institute is housed on the campuses of the University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey and Rutgers University. Dr. Martin Grimet, director of the WM Keck Center for Collaborative Neuroscience here at Rutgers, has expanded his research with the new state funding. Part of what we have done here is we uh, took advantage of the state's initiative to set up uh, a laboratory where we could translate a lot of what we're doing in rodent stem cells to human embryonic stem cells. The new stem cell research center stands side by side with the Keck Center, but researchers here are careful not to allow research on human embryonic stem cells that is disallowed by federal mandates to cross over. This line between adult and human embryonic stem cells has played a major part in the stem cell debate in recent years. Dr. Kenneth Breslauer, Dean and Vice President of Health and Life Sciences at Rutgers, says that past the hype surrounding stem cells lies a history of clinical usage in the form of bone marrow transplantation. The distinction between the different uh, classes, whether it's embryonic and such, is what has created most of the current uh, fervor and conversation. From a certain perspective, um, stem cell therapy is a proven therapy that's been worked in probably thousands of patients over the past 25 years. And those are adult stem cells. So from that point of view, adult stem cells are a proven entity and um, you don't have all the ethical complications and also the scientific complications of working with embryonic stem cells where um, one has to worry about tumor formation, inappropriate differentiation, etc. And the hope is down the road that the uh, revertase type of approaches to reprogram adult stem cells into less mature cells approaching the behaviors of human embryonic stem cells will give us the almost unlimited supply. But f for the moment, we don't have that success in hand in a way that has demonstrated efficacy without potential inducing of tumors and such. And so the currently the most uh, fertile of the, um, of the stem cells are the embryonic ones for purposes of researching how to th induce them into new forms of cell lines that will be important for transplantation. Much of the current work on human embryonic stem cell therapies in humans is being done in parts of the world where, for better or worse, there aren't as many restrictions on this type of research. That's where the populations and the regulatory oversight permits this work to proceed. So although it is not possible in the United States at this point, we're able to benefit from uh, working with uh, colleagues internationally where these clinical trials are permissible. Dr. Wise Young, a leading neuroscientist and founding director of the Keck Center, has been in China setting up the Spinal Cord Injury Network, or China's SignNet, with the University of Hong Kong Spinal Cord Injury Fund. Unfortunately, there's a significant population of uh, spinal cord injured patients in China, not just because of the size of the population, but the mode of transportation. There's been a lot of uh, bicycle and motorcycle injuries that have uh, created this population. Dr. Young is involved in, has put together over the past year during a sabbatical, a clinical trial network of 25 centers in China that will accommodate about a thousand spinal cord injury patients a year. Now that's a big breakthrough and he's going to try and develop a similar type of network locally um, so that we can test therapies in multi-centers using um, state-of-the-art uh, procedures that should be acceptable to agencies like the, the FDA. Back in the U.S., high-profile personalities like Michael J. Fox, Nancy Reagan, and the late Christopher Reeve serve as rallying points for the search for cures for Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and spinal cord injuries by using human embryonic stem cell research. But while the public, deluged by promises of cures for some of the world's most devastating conditions, 
have the patience to wait as incremental results advance the science of stem cells without producing the high-profile results. The history of science, though, is replete with examples of just the need to convince the public of the value of that basic science for the ultimate translation into the clinic, the war on cancer, the uh, efforts over the decades of the March of Dimes. What happens is that science is developing of vaccines. There was a tremendous effort with the Salk vaccine and others to develop the science behind the vaccine justifying the work for ultimately having the clinical outcome. I would agree that it, it is in the advancing science stage um, in terms of transplanting embryonic stem cells that, let's say, are differentiated for whatever uh, application, cardiac, uh, spinal cord injury, that's still in the development stage. But there's going to be great benefit, and it's happening already, that um, pharmaceutical companies are taking embryonic stem cells and turning them into model human cells that they can screen drugs on in, um, in their laboratories. Now, that presents uh, models based on human cells, human embryonic stem cells, that are going to be uh, better models that we have now for screening new drugs. Dr. Grimet said that he expected to see clinical trials involving human embryonic stem cell therapies in humans relatively soon. Certainly Geron is talking uh, very seriously about using embryonic stem human embryonic stem cells to turn them into um, oligodendrocyte precursor cells. Those are the cells that will form myelin and to transplant them into spinal cord injury patients. So that is a very visible um, clinical trial that's being discussed and there are a lot of issues. Uh, clinic uh, there are scientists who are concerned that um, are those cells going to be totally safe? Is there any chance that they will form tumors since they've been derived from embryonic stem cells? Um, but there is certainly a lot of preclinical work being done and a lot of preparations. So I would expect to see something happening in the next year or something like that. Less than two weeks after Dr. Grimet's comments, Geron announced that it had applied for permission to go ahead with the first clinical trials in humans using this technology. Pending FDA approval, the company expects to initiate phase one trials this summer. Clinical applications would still take years of development. So what can stem cell scientists do to let the public know that cures may not be right around the corner, but that progress is being made? We are concerned that the people will in fact be disillusioned by not seeing things happen fast enough. Uh, that is a risk in advocating for the investment. Uh, although if one takes a long-term view of this in the history of biomedical research, the benefits have overwhelmingly outweighed the investments, and we believe this is no different. But we need to do a better job in the public relations area, of which we're not trained in as scientists, in conveying to the public public that this is uh, a long-term commitment. I think we need to do a better job of really educating the public in what are kind of complicated uh, issues, but uh, they are explainable. Reporting from Rutgers University, I'm Todd Neal, MedPage Today.